it is one long journey from Auckland to Oaxaca. It's not for the faint-hearted, especially when you're traveling with a disability. At the moment, we're in rainy season, monsoon season, so it's very hot, very humid, and very wet. Gracias. Cuánto cuesta, señor? My name is Robbie Francis. Uh, I'm 27 years old. I'm from Hamilton, New Zealand. I'm the co-founder and co-director of the Lucy Foundation. Robbie is in Mexico to check up on her business. She's helping coffee farmers improve their yield with the goal of exporting coffee beans to New Zealand. We're a social enterprise, basically a bunch of young people who are really passionate about disability inclusion and coffee. Jack, coffee? I'd love a coffee if you're putting one on. The idea came about where we were looking at how we could engage people with disabilities and people without disabilities in activities that brought them together. And we also wanted to include coffee because in New Zealand, you know, we love drinking coffee. So this is the third time we've visited the region and we're working with a couple of families. We want to ask, how has their coffee been growing? What have they been doing since we last saw them? Certain steps need to be put in place to improve the health of the coffee plants. This is going to lead to the families being able to get a better product and being able to sell it for a higher price. The soil is the main concern and main issue. Miguel himself comes from a coffee farming family. He is uh, very innovative when it comes to exploring new ways of farming coffee, especially if it's organic and, and environmental. So he has his own coffee farm um, in partnership with some people and he already provides coffee for the New Zealand coffee market. He just has this wonderful way with people, um, very gentle and uh, yeah, people just get him. A lot of these families are living in, in very difficult situations. They don't have a regular or secure income. Now, they would love to just work in coffee and just do that, that's their thing. But that requires time, it requires effort, labor, and money. So because they don't have those things to put in there, they're having to work in other jobs elsewhere around the town or even for other farmers. The Pluma coffee, it's really unique because it's a progeny that developed in this area. You cannot grow Pluma coffee in Colombia or in other place. It's indigenous and unique to this area. That's the importance of Pluma. And it's also because of the township called Pluma Hidalgo, the surroundings and all the environment. So it makes a unique place to try to save and to maintain. So this is like a beautiful plant, right? Yes, you can see the plants that are really healthy. And it's because of the treatment. You put the microorganisms uh, with organic matter, with the cal, so you level the pH and everything. It's as it starts good, it will keep on going good. Every node has a lot of cherries. Yeah. And this is just a young coffee tree of two years old. So you, just, you can see the change of a well-sustained and a properly uh, raised coffee tree. So potentially, if we planted now, we could have something Similar like this, this within yes. two years. Hopefully, yes. Awesome. That's the goal.